Welcome to Tech Brothers. In this video, we're going to learn how to configure availability group, also known as AG in SQL Server 2016. In this video, we'll be taking a look on requirements and best practices uh, of number one, how to prepare our node before we can add that node into our Windows cluster. Number two, how to create the cluster. What exactly do we need to create the cluster um, for our availability group? Number three, configuring availability group. Once we added the nodes into our cluster, how do we configure uh, availability groups in our SQL Server Configuration Manager. Number four, there are some errors, common errors that we every day we face due to maybe not following the best practices or maybe we're missing something, maybe we have a permission error. Whatever the case may be, some of those errors will be reproduced in this video and I will provide the resolution that may help you learn along the way. I have made the list to go through each one of these. So let's talk about first preparing a cluster node. I'm assuming in this video that you already have installed SQL Server 2016. Uh, if you haven't done that, you can watch my video how to install SQL Server 2016. It has all the prerequisites that are required to install SQL Server in uh, standalone mode. Um, additionally, if, um, if you already have done the installation of SQL Server, we need failover clustering feature. .NET Framework 3.5 is the requirement of SQL Server, so if you already installed SQL Server 2016, you should have this um, role right here added already. Uh, additional uh, role that we need from the uh, Windows roles and feature is failover clustering feature and I'll show you that how to do that. So let's uh, talk about the network piece of uh, preparing the node. Um, first we need the static IP of uh, each node that you're uh, trying to add into your uh, Windows cluster. In my case, I have two nodes, SQL Prod 1 and SQL Prod 2. As you can see that this, I have the static IPs already. We need to configure that static IP on each node. DHCP uh, setting is not going to work. And that static IP needs to be external. There are two IPs that we need uh, to prepare uh, our node. One is external and other is private, also known as heartbeat. Uh, in my case, I have on each node uh, configured um, static. And this is my private. It, it needs to be a different subnet. As you can see right here, I have two instead of one subnet. So my IP address, private IP address is 10 and 11. So what private IP address is basically the communication between the nodes. Um, nowadays, there is a concept of uh, coming from Microsoft um, that uh, you really don't need the private um, or heartbeat in order for cluster to work properly. I think that's a, a little bit misconception there. Um, it used to be that if you don't have the private uh, network, uh, it will not let you create cluster. But the only difference that I saw that um, in, in uh, cluster validation, it will let you create cluster if you don't have the static uh, uh, private IP. So if there is no communication between the nodes, it will not stop you from creating cluster. However, your cluster will be unstable. So I would recommend that you always follow a conventional way of configuring cluster, one IP address external that will communicate with your um, main network as well as um, with Active Directory and domain, uh, domain services. And other is communication between the nodes uh, that will make your help your cluster be stable. Uh, this is important. Next is our security. This is my recommendation that um, when we add failover clustering feature in our Windows, um, it, it, the service gets installed using um, system account, local account, or uh, anti-authority account. Uh, later on, you will run into issue if you will leave that that way. Uh, I have left that way just to produce some errors, but I will recommend that uh, you should have a, a cluster service account for each cluster that you uh, wanted to uh, create. Um, it's, again, it's my recommendation. This will not um, create any issue while you create the cluster. It will not give you error, but I would uh, recommend you that um, yeah, later on you might run into uh, some issues not having that service account um, and cluster services running by that service account. Okay, let's uh, talk about creating cluster part. Uh, what do we need when we are ready to create the cluster? Let's suppose that we added all the nodes that we 
wanted to add and next screen or next configuration we do is uh, creating the cluster we need a cluster unique name in my case it's a 2016 cluster uh, in your case whatever the name that you want to give it needs to be unique unique means that no other computer should have that name uh, number two this is again very important create delete computer object in active directory if uh, uh, there are two options here in my case this this guy right here tech brothers uh, backslash raza this is part of dba group he's a member of a, a dba team he's not member of a system team he doesn't have permission to create um, or delete object in active directory so if you are part of a dba team you need this you need to send an email to your uh, system team system team are the one that who prepare that uh, 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 who install Windows and everything and uh, give you permissions in Active Directory. They handle Active Directory and domain and all that. If that's a different team, then you do need to send an email to get the permission uh, from them before you start creating the cluster. Otherwise, you will run into error and you will see that error when we do the actual demo. Uh, no, option two, uh, sysadmin team has already created a cluster name with IP. In a lot of organization, they don't like to give anybody else to create or delete object in, in their Active Directory or domain name services. What they do is they create the, uh, you send them the name, what what is your cluster name and all the requirements, they pre-populate that in Active Directory. If that's the case, then you don't need this permission. Let's talk about the networking piece. Uh, cluster, any object that you create in cluster as a role, or application you really need to have a static IP so this IP if you don't have the IP you can get it from your networking team or your system team that what are the IP uh, that's available uh, it has to be available IP it cannot be um, a duplicate IP otherwise you will run into uh, your cluster going down saying that it has detected the du duplicate IP and your cluster will be down Let's talk about configuring availability group in SQL Server. This is assuming that everything went well. Everything went well in the uh, creating cluster and uh, uh, we're ready to configure our SQL Server av uh, availability group on our SQL servers on all the nodes. So uh, first is that in configuration, uh, you need to go in SQL Server configuration and uh, uh, enable AG availability group using SQL Server configuration manager. So um, security from square, security point of view, um, I would recommend that this is very important that you don't run your SQL Server services, any service that you have installed during your installation, not run using local account or anti authority. You should use a separate service account. This is very important. Otherwise, it will you will run into a lot of issues. Other thing is that DBA team members or user changing configuration needs to be part of Windows admin group on all nodes. So uh, this will uh, take care of a lot of the issues that you don't have permission to open uh, this disk, creating a folder or directory or files. This, this, this is very important too. If you're creating a listener, the user or cluster dollar, this means that whatever the cluster that you use, this the reason I put this here, cluster dollar, if you don't run your cluster with your service account right here, it is gonna go using your cluster name dollar sign as a user and try to create the object in Active Directory. So believe it or not that um, you will run into this issue while creating the listener unless the listener also is taken care of by the system team just like they create the object uh, your cluster object so they run a uh, side by side uh, so just make sure that uh, when you create cluster uh, listener if you need to create listener you need to have the same permission as creating the cluster these are the some common errors they are not exactly uh, how the error appears but I just put it out here uh, for your review that uh, we will probably be reproducing some of these errors number one user cluster doesn't have permission to create delete this is very common so we'll be seeing in our demo that we will run into this issue number two node one cannot communicate with node two this goes back again uh, with the best practice of not running sql server uh, with the um, service account 
joining database takes forever and then run out an error pointer we will see that this is again the permission error and this is again goes back to not having sql server run with the service proper service account secondary replica is showing offline in ag and error out um, you may run into this error and we'll reproduce that too missing endpoints in ag uh, properties this is when an endpoint is not created uh, but uh, it goes and try to add that replica and uh, database into the um, availability group so you'll run into this error so we'll see where we need to take a look the missing endpoint in ag even if we can't reproduce this error so this is about it uh, we'll go back and forth with uh, our items um, and knock them off one by one uh, right here i have sql prod one this is my one node sql prod two this is my second node so let's take a look on my uh, sql prod one that um, if everything that i need as far as um, first tab here preparing cluster node so i'm going to go ahead and show you first thing that whether windows roles and features are added or not for that if you're using windows 2012 you need to click on server manager click on add roles and features and click next role based or feature based installation click next this is my server click next and as you can see right here th these are the roles and we're looking for the features click next and right here dotnet framework 3.5 i already have sql server installed on these uh, servers so this was the requirement from sql server side so this is there uh, next we have failover clustering installed i do have already failover clustering installed but if not then you need to add this feature and uh, click next and add this feature for our um, uh, preparation of node into our availability group cluster let's take a look on networking this is my network right click and go to open network and sharing click on change adapter settings and here is my intern uh, my external uh, that is the static IP this is the uh, network that is communicating between um, my main uh, organization network uh, this is the uh, network that will communicate between your active directory uh, DNS and all that and this is my private so let's take a look on the external one if you notice I'm using IPv4 TCP IP setting click properties and this is my IP address of this uh, node this is again this is external this will communicate with my main network as you can see the preferred DNS settings are there default gateways there and all that so click okay if it's not the case then you need to do this this is my private IPv4 again and as you can see that this has different subnet and this is the IP address all right uh, Windows features and networking is taken care of uh, but uh, let's take a look on the services and see if we're running uh, cluster services with the service account 